Good morning. And welcome. And happy Easter. And as those of you who are in the WhatsApp group will also know, happy birthday, Holy Trinity Church. If you've not actually seen the, the little exchange there, Mary Margaret started it. Um, this church was officially consecrated on the 31st of March, 1842. That's when the bishop came. It was a Thursday evening and they had the consecration service for Holy Trinity Church. But the congregation had been somewhat impatient because the 31st of March, 1842 was the Thursday after Easter. And so the first service actually took place in church on Easter day, before the church was consecrated. As a consequence, it couldn't be recorded in the church register because it wasn't officially a church yet. Um, and in fact, um, George Norman's diary apparently records the fact that in the months between the church being completed and the bishop being able to come and consecrate it, several, this is a direct quote, several improper prayer meetings took place in the building. I think improper possibly meant something other than we might consider today. <laughs> But this church has been here for 182 years and the first service with all the congregation present was on Easter day. This is truly the birthday of the church. Let's just be still for a moment. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together on this most glorious of days. Lord, as we meet to sing your praises, to celebrate the resurrection of your Son, so we ask you to fill us with Easter joy. By your Holy Spirit, inspire us now in all that we are about to do, that we may truly bring glory to your name, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. One of the first things that we do on Easter Day is to light the Easter candle, the Paschal candle. And as we do that, we have these words on the screen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! And I think these words are so important. We're going to do them again. So can we go back on the side again, Nick? Thank you. And this time you're going to raise the roof. Okay? Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. That's the thing with new candles, they take a while to actually light. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. So we say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we sing our opening song, He Has Risen.
See what I can see on my screen here. Sarah, thank you. <laughs> Rhythmic aerobics, that was. <laughs> Would you please sit on it? Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Paul. The first reading is that one. We might want to lift it up a bit. Um, <laughs> and that might work better. That's better. Thank you. It's tough. No, I'll try and be short. I will try and be short to do. First reading of the New Testament is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter proclaims the good news. Then Peter began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Then Peter... Internet is very slow. Often a better paper. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of every 
of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the, to the people and testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness and sins through his name. Forgiveness of sin through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's a good job I'm not using that. I could be really cool and get you to come here next year. I'd have to be up here. <laughs> I'm going to put it down just for that reason. <laughs> And so we're going to stand to sing our next song, See What a Morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. 
Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other outside disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Arama uh, Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. I speak in the name of the one true Son, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's the third day after the crucifixion. And we know from the gospel accounts of the crucifixion that Mary Magdalene was present throughout at the foot of the cross. Next to the, next to the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene was probably the most prominent woman during the days of Jesus. She came from Magdala, a small fishing village off the shore of Galilee. She had witnessed the death of Christ she no doubt had been involved in the anointing of his body for burial in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Now John tells us, she goes early in the morning on the first day of the week to anoint his body again, to do this last act of devotion and discipleship for her Lord. This was following the traditional Jewish custom which anointed the body until the third day when it was believed that the soul departed the body. So Mary Magdalene was not doing anything out of the ordinary in going to the tomb. It's worth noting though, that as throughout the rest of the Gospel of John, she begins her journey under the cover of darkness, coming to Jesus, the light of the world, and now, unbeknownst to her, risen from the dead. 
The symbolism of light and darkness is apparent even here at the end of the Gospel of John, as it was in the opening chapter. And when she arrives at the tomb, the stone has been rolled back and she immediately sets off to get the disciples. It's interesting that she goes for Peter. He had denied Jesus three times, and yet his standing is such amongst those who follow Jesus that it's to him Mary Magdalene goes to report the stone being rolled away from the entrance. John recounts how Peter and John run to the tomb and find it empty. John just peers in, but Peter, in typical fashion, rushes on in. They find the grave clothes where his body was. You may remember earlier in John, when Lazarus is raised from the dead, he comes out of the grave with his grave clothes on and needs help to remove them from his body. When Christ rises from the dead, his grave clothes remain in the grave exactly where his body was. Why? Because Lazarus was raised to physical life again and he would one day die. Christ, however, has defeated death. Death would never again have any claim over him and so the grave clothes are left behind. They would never be needed again. They would be needed again in the case of Lazarus, but not in the case of Christ. <coughs> Stop and think for a minute what they've just witnessed. The tomb is empty, the grave clothes which a few days before had been wrapped with spices around the body of Christ are lying exactly where they had so lovingly laid his body. And we read, they went home. They went home. Maybe they thought, what else can we do? But look at what Mary does. She remains at the tomb weeping. Her grief and pain at the loss of her Lord is compounded now by the loss of his body. This was the last place she had seen his broken, dead body, and she won't move from it. The loss of his body is the final indignity. Even her grief has been violated, and she weeps. The emotional turmoil of the last days overwhelms her, and she breaks down and weeps at the sight of the empty tomb. Yet in spite of her grief, she plucks up the courage to look into the tomb for herself, and what a sight she's met with. He has died between two thieves, and now two angels sit, and between them there are empty grave clothes declaring his resurrection. They ask her a simple question, woman, why are you crying? From the perspective of heaven, Tears at the empty tomb of Christ make no sense at all. From the angel's perspective, tears of grief on this Easter morn are totally inappropriate. But for Mary, they're the only way to express her heart's pain. With tear-stained cheeks and tear-strained voice, she utters her grief. They've taken my Lord and I don't know where to find him. How true. But her Lord knows exactly where to find her. John tells us that Mary Magdalene immediately becomes aware of another presence behind her and turning, perceives it to be the gardener. And Jesus now asks her the same question as the angels, why are you crying? And adds a second question, who are you looking for? She's courteous to him, even in the midst of her grief, and asks where they have taken his body so that she may go and bring it back. She asks the very person who is responsible for the tomb being empty. But at this point, 
She doesn't recognize him. She's come to the tomb, the place of the dead, looking for a corpse to anoint. And in a moment, she will leave, having met with her living Lord in the midst of the place of death. He utters just one word, Mary. And her eyes are opened to who it is that stands before her now. The good shepherd calls his sheep by name. They know his voice and heed his call. Isn't that what Jesus has said previously in John 10? Now here is the practical demonstration of that truth. He simply calls her by name, Mary, and her shattered soul is transformed and her shattered world remade. It was her own name, spoken by Jesus, which opened her eyes to the truth of the resurrection. When Jesus calls his sheep, he always personally calls them by name. Mary's response is to fall at his feet, and there then comes a gentle and kindly rebuke from Christ. He tells her not to cling on to him because he has not yet ascended to the Father. He wants to teach her and the other disciples that he will no longer be known by sight or touch, but by faith. This is the beginning of the process of preparing them for his ascension, which he connects with his resurrection. His ascension will be so dramatic so as to leave them in no doubt that he's ascended and that there will be no more earthly appearances until he comes again. He then instructs Mary to go and tell the disciples what she has seen and heard from her Lord Jesus and she goes immediately to tell them. In John's Easter account, there's a sense of urgency and excitement. Mary Magdalene came so early to the tomb that it was still dark. She couldn't wait to go to the tomb. And when Mary Magdalene found the tomb empty, she ran to tell Peter and John. And then Peter and John ran to the tomb with John winning the race. There's an eagerness to see, to know, to experience. The very first event to be celebrated by the church was Easter, the resurrection. The rest of the church year gradually developed according to events before and after Easter. The early Christians met on the first day of each week to celebrate Jesus rising from the dead. Eventually, the Sabbath was changed from Saturday to Sunday. And while this is still true today, the church has set aside a season to celebrate Easter in a special way. Easter is not a one-day celebration, but a season of seven Sundays. They're not called Sundays after Easter, but Sundays of Easter, to reflect the true tone of Easter. The vestments are white, the colours of joy and festivity. The Alleluia is returned to the liturgy. Sunday after Sunday, the church continually celebrates the feast of the risen Christ. And this indicates the central position of the resurrection in the Christian religion. There is a challenge to us all as a church this morning. Jesus commanded Mary Magdalene to go and tell the disciples that he'd risen from the dead and she had met with the risen Lord. She went and did what was commanded. I think as the Church of Christ, this is a lesson we all need to follow. We say we have met with the risen Christ. 
we say he has freed us from sin and death. But who have we actually told about it? Isn't it about time we told everyone? Isn't it about time we personally became responsible and actually told people this wonderful news whenever and wherever we can? This Easter morning, think about Mary Magdalene and what she did. Learn from her devotion to Christ, her honesty in the face of pain, her searching for Jesus, and let us all follow her example of telling others that he is risen from the dead. Alleluia. Amen. Hallelujah indeed. Thanks, Jen. Since the early days of the church, it has been customary on Easter Day to renew the vows made at our baptism. And so we're going to do that now. Would you please stand? In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we remember that through the Paschal Mystery we have died and been buried with him in baptism, so that we may rise with him to a new life within the family of his church. Now that we have completed our observance of Lent, we renew the promises made at our baptism, affirming our allegiance to Christ and our rejection of all that is evil. Therefore I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth and the life? I come to Christ. It's not changing. So, brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Those who are baptised are called to worship and serve God. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? With the help of God, I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? With the help of God, I will. Will you proclaim, by word and example, the good news of God in Christ? With the help of God, I will. 
Will you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbour as yourself? With the help of God, I will. Will you acknowledge Christ's authority over human society by prayer for the world and its leaders, by defending the weak and by seeking peace and justice? With the help of God, I will. So may Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Thanks, Jenny. Let us pray. God, our Father, on this Easter day, we come together to offer praise and adoration for Jesus. Jesus, risen, alive, powerful and victorious. The salvation of the world. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, without the resurrection of your Son, our faith would be empty and without hope. But he is alive, and we rejoice in the knowledge that in Jesus all that separates, injures, and destroys has, become, has been overcome by that which unites and heals and creates. We pray for your church here at Holy Trinity, and we give thanks for calling us into the company of those who trust in Christ and seek to obey his will. We think of your church throughout the world today, celebrating in clusters and crowds all over the world. Our language, race and nationalities may be different, but our worship is one and our praise for you united. We pray that your spirit may guide and strengthen us in all mission and service to you, to our own community, and to the world outside in whatever way we can. Let us contribute however and wherever we can. And we pray that day by day we may draw closer to you, experiencing your love for us. Your name be hallowed, your kingdom come. Lord, on this special day, grant us peace in your world. For countries where there is war and communities that are broken. We remember today those involved in conflicts around the world. And in our prayers, we especially remember the people who constantly face wars and hostilities. We pray for those who find themselves homeless for the refugees, for the displaced victims of war. We pray for the people who are starving, for those who face droughts or floods. We pray for those living in our own country in areas of deprivation, where high unemployment and crime levels make daily living a tough challenge. And we pray for the work of the food banks, and all other agencies involved in tackling poverty and homelessness in our own country. May all who struggle know that you are always with them in their suffering and will follow them step by step down whichever road they choose to take. Your name be hallowed, your kingdom come. Lord, we pray for ourselves. You know the needs of human life. And as we seek to live our lives according to your example, help us by your presence to overcome our hasty speech that hurts others, to be free from greed and selfishness, from pride and jealousy that spoil our life. Let your presence help us to care about the feelings of others, to be gentle and ready to say we're sorry. 
You know us, Lord, better than we know ourselves. Bring out the best in us, so that our lives may reflect your way for the world. Help us to have the faith and confidence to spread your good news to all the world, in our daily lives and in all our interactions. Your name be hallowed, your kingdom God of compassion, we pray for all those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. We pray for those who are so weighed down by sickness or pain, they struggle to see and feel your love surrounding them in their darkness and despair. Be merciful to those in need. We pray for the broken hearted that you would bind up their sorrows. For the sick that you would heal their infirmities. For the lonely that in you they would discover the perfect friend. In a moment of silence we offer up anyone who is known and loved by us, who is in need of healing and wholeness in the loving care and compassion of your touch. Your name be hallowed, your kingdom come. We give thanks that you seek us out as your children. You call us by name and lead and guide us to your eternal kingdom. We pray for our loved ones who have passed through their earthly life and who are now in the eternal kingdom with our loving Father. We remember anyone whose anniversary falls at this time and for who the wounds of bereavement are still raw. Lord, you are the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. We remember all those who've died and those who mourn their passing, that they may walk in the light of Christ, which always eternally shines and brings hope. You turn our darkness into light, and in your light shall we see light. Your name be hallowed, your kingdom come. Ever living God, help us now to celebrate our joy in the resurrection of Jesus and to express, express in our lives the love we celebrate. Death cannot hold the Lord of life. New life for him means new life for all who believe in you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks, Jen. Would you please stand? The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Whatever way you feel comfortable, let's offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. So we remain standing to sing All Heaven Declares. All Heaven Declares The glory of the risen Lord Who can compare With the beauty of Bound to be. 
they set on him. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So not too many notices there for this week. Um, there will be coffee and chat on Thursday morning. For those of you who are around at that time, um, do come along to the North Room and join in with that. Um, next Sunday service is at 10 a.m. as usual. Um, an advance notice, there will be an extraordinary meeting of the PCC on Tuesday the 16th. Um, that is primarily to agree the 2023 accounts now that they have been audited. So PCC members, please make, please make sure you've got that in your diary. That should be our last PCC meeting before the annual parochial church meeting. Thanks, Nick. There you have, at the bottom of the, the list of dates there, our next prayer and appoint is on Tuesday the 23rd. Christian Aid Week is coming. Right, we're rushing through these, because you know it all already. So those are your dates that you should already have in your diary. And that's a reminder of different ways in which you can give, um, assuming you want to, and we're very grateful when you do. Thank you especially to those who gave specifically towards the Easter flowers. And thank you, Jean, for that wonderful display of lilies behind me there. And thank you, Jill, for the flowers around the base of the Paschal Candle. Again, those of you in the WhatsApp group will have seen photos of those. But if you want to come and have a closer look afterwards, you're very welcome to do so. Do join us in the South Room um, for refreshments. There are still hot cross buns to eat up. Um, there will be tea and coffee. There's also a little bit of a kind of chocolate Russian roulette as you leave. I've got a basket of eggs. Um, and you're all welcome to take an egg. And the thing is, I got one bag of milk and one bag of dark chocolate, and Judy's put them all into the basket together. <laughs> there is no way of telling which is which until you unwrap them. So um, depending on your taste, you'll either be very happy or you might be wanting to swap with someone. <laughs> That's up to you. Let's stand to sing our final hymn, Thine Be the Glory.
Jen, you can't see them, but I have four Sharpling boys waving to me on, on the screen here. It's great to see you. <laughs> God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and with all whom you love, now and always. Amen. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. You have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. We will shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. So let us go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.